13 years together, almost 11 years married. Almost. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom and I'm a wife, but I also have a pretty extensive design background. We've been really great working together because he works kind of here and I'm a little bit way over there. <laughs> Sorry, my laugh. It just like chuckles. <laughs> it echoes. We love living in the Inland Empire because it's centrally located. And actually, we grew up in the Inland Empire. You're close to the mountains, to the beach, the desert. Yeah, hop on the 15, head to Vegas. We're not too far from that. It's a great place to raise a family. There's so much history here, beautiful scenery, beautiful parks. Culture. Yeah. The cost of living's cheaper. A lot cheaper here. You get so much more um, for your money out here. I want to share with other families that it actually is easier than you think to have a quick home-cooked meal after a long, busy day. When you feel good and you eat good, you're going to perform better in life. I grew up very different than he did. So when it came to DIY, I was a very amateur. Switch only cost two bucks. Cheaper the better. <laughs> we could go on for years to talk about this one. <laughs> Just got to live within your means. Get your hands dirty and do a DIY project. Those are always fun. We've got them all over. How'd you learn how to cook? I love to cook. You know, I think just growing up with grandmothers, my grandmothers just had that really down home, fresh from scratch smell every time I would go. My mom's mom, my grandma, we would come to her house and there was always something freshly baked, whether it was a main course like a turkey or a fresh pie or some soup simmering on the stove. It was just that fragrance. It enticed me and I, it was that comfort smell. Going over to grandma's, something's gonna be there good to eat. So in my house, it usually smells like food. You know, one of the biggest things in a household and the centerpieces is the kitchen, especially when you have family come over, you have friends, you have gatherings, parties. And the big thing is a lot of the gatherings do revolve around the kitchen. So what I wanted to do as far as what we had before is I increased this kitchen size by twice. And by doing that along the way, I initially did my research. I went through websites, talked to different manufacturers, and what I did is I built this island based on the prefab sizes they have to offer. And by doing that, I was able to save a couple thousand dollars, and I didn't do anything different other than did my research, did my due diligence. So moving on over here, we didn't want to take away the lighting, the contrast, so we kept it on light on light, especially with the subway tile. And this is something that's very easy. Anyone can do, anyone can solve. And just a little bit of elbow grease, a little research by looking on YouTube, there's a lot of things that out there that will show you how to do that. And a little spackle, grout, put it up there, and look it. It's gorgeous. We don't want a floor where it's too perfect. Because you know what? When you have something too perfect, you start seeing a lot of imperfections in it as far as scratches. And what we did here too, because laminate has come a long way over the years, and the floor that we actually picked out has the texture of wood, has the grains, has the feel, has the bevel and it really signifies much more of what a wood floor looks like. And we didn't have to buy wood, it was just laminate. So another thing too, as far as along the way where we did to add more dimension, that actually highlights the island is we add these can lights right here. When you actually turn them on, it really feels like you're focusing in on the object itself. It really brings out much more of the contrast. You start to see more of the veins. And it just, it really starts to show more of the detail of what you pick out on an island. So just adding a little bit of cat lining, doing the work yourself, it's really easy, really simple. And I'll tell you, I love it. So today we're gonna be doing a chicken piccata. I'm a busy mom, I work full time, so does my husband. And it's really important to me to serve a nutritious meal that's not only nutritious but flavorful as well and something that my kids actually enjoy so this is a favorite in my household today we're going to use boneless chicken breast kosher salt ground pepper grass-fed butter fresh squeezed lemon juice unsalted chicken stock avocado oil brined capers grated parmesan cheese fresh parsley gluten-free spaghetti and raw zucchini so I have some lemons, got these lemons fresh from my tree. Um, they are, I picked them a little too uh, prematurely. So a good trick if you don't have enough 
squishiness in there is to put it in the microwave for just about five seconds or so, just to kind of warm it up, get its juices flowing. Not enough to cook it, but enough just to get it nice and warm, roll it on out, and then we can just slice it. All right, and then um, obviously this is not the most fanciest of juicers, but this does the trick for me, and I'm kind of partial to my little things. So get this at any store, any store that sells houseware. You just wanna get a lot of good juice in there. Nothing like fresh lemons for your chicken piccata. I wouldn't recommend using the, the pre-juiced ones that come in the bottle. They just don't taste the same. Taste a little processed to me, which is something we avoid in this house. We try to do things whole and as clean as possible. I like to make a lot of sauce. So some people make their piccatas using different kind of lemons. Some like it a little bit more tangy than others. I like it a lot of sauce and I like it a little tang. Um, a little more tang means less seasoning, less salt, less things that you have to add to it. It's just true good flavor. Now I like to use a sun-kissed lemon for this versus the Meyer lemon. Meyer lemons are delicious, but they tend to be a little bit more sweet. And again, for this, I'm going for a little bit more tang and a little bit more of that true lemon flavor. Now, you can actually repurpose these lemons if you'd like to. You can use them, they're a great cleaning agent, nice, gets things nice and shiny. I'm gonna save a little bit to zest a little bit of the lemon zest on top of my piccata when it's finished. You can put it down your drain, your garbage disposal, kind of freshens up your kitchen. Lots of good uses for lemon. All right, now that we have all our lemons juiced, let's go ahead and move on. So today, we're gonna be using a chicken breast. I've pounded it thin and I've sliced it, kind of about chicken tender size. My husband usually likes chicken thighs. However, I find that the chicken breast actually gives a better flavor to the piccata, so I win this time. Gonna go ahead and sear it in a hot cast iron skillet. I love cast iron skillets. They are so inexpensive. I have some high-end pots, but let me just tell you, I get some of the most even, flavorful cooking off of this bad boy right here. Cast iron skillets are fantastic because they are very, very inexpensive. Hashtag cheap. Um, uh. But I do have some very nice enameled cast iron pots and things, but this one, very inexpensive, and it's, especially when it's seasoned. If you can get one at a yard sale or a thrift store, I know that sounds a little odd, but they've been loved. They've been loved by hopefully great nutritious ingredients that have been cooked on it. It gets better over time. Mm -hmm. You do not use soap on it. Hot water, you can get a little pan plastic scraper to just kind of get some of the bits off. And then uh, my, my tidbit trick is I'll put a little avocado oil or olive oil, just a tiny, tiny bit in the pan, take a paper towel or a rag and just Lightly just coat, coat it. it, let it air dry. It looks shiny and pretty again, and there you go. It's sealed in those spices mm -hmm. and all the yummy goodness. I'll tell you, you get a yeah. nice sear on meats, yeah. your fish. I mean, Delicious. whatever you want to do. You can take it. it camping. It can go right in the oven. From you really your stove. don't need any other dishes other than a cast one, iron one pot. and stone mm -hmm. dishes too. I like. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love a good stone dish too. I know. Yep. So you want to get it nice and hot. And I'm going to go ahead and put about two tablespoons of butter or so. This butter is grass-fed butter. And then I'm going to also use about the same amount of avocado oil. Now, I'm using avocado oil because olive oil actually loses all its nutrients once it's cooked, where avocado oil can retain its um, nutritional benefits. So we're gonna go ahead and get that nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and put about a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice and give it a quick little swirl again. Really wanna scrape up all those brown bits, all that good flavor from the pan. I've seasoned the chicken breast with a little kosher salt and some fresh cracked pepper to taste. I like to control my salt, so a little will go a long way. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it nice and brown on each side, just enough to get a nice, good sear. Now, a traditional piccata is also breaded. Well, my husband is very researched and is dedicated to health and leads a ketogenic lifestyle. So we are not gonna use any flour in this. And I have found that you actually don't need the flour. 
that the flavor from the chicken just on the cast iron skillet with the butter and the avocado oil does the trick. Now, one thing about me is that I don't actually follow a recipe. Recipes will be my guide, but I like to put my own little spin on it. So I tweaked it with the avocado oil, uh, eliminated the flour, and doubled my sauce ingredients because my husband loves a good sauce. And you can use this over zucchini noodles, which is what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna do a gluten-free spaghetti for my kids, or it makes a great, especially in the summertime, uh, chicken piccata salad. And the juice really becomes a really good dressing. Hey babe, you're home. Hey babe, how you doing? What are you cooking? It smells good as soon as I walk through that door. Well, my favorite chicken piccata. Yeah. Oh, I'm hungry. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> True story. Grass-fed butter actually came from this guy because he really took the time to um, research the health benefits of foods where I as love to make recipes, obviously looking for the healthy option, but he's my, he's my geek when it comes to the food. He will go and he will research it. And there was something about grass-fed butter. Growing up, watching some food shows, a lot of the famous chefs loved butter. Then the controversies came out that it wasn't actually good for you, and now it's back that it's good for you. It's a yeah. good for you. And this butter, the grass-fed butter, it literally is like butter. It's because it's like creamy and delicious. It has silky, that perfect so, yeah, just... it has that perfect salt balance to it, and you don't have to add any other salt usually because it really helps to bind everything together, makes a creamy texture. I love grass -fed. You know, and if you want to get into the nitty gritty of it too, when it goes from a, a, a grass fed instead of a grain fed, you start producing what you don't find in a lot of meats is omega-3s. Mm -hmm. And that's such an important key of the human body. There's so, iron in meats. There's um, lots of other health benefits, but there isn't that omegas. When you look at the color, normal butter you buy from the store is white. Mm -hmm. Grass fed butter is very uh, that yellow. yellow Golden, light orange, yeah. golden color. Mm -hmm. So, and you start to see the difference and it tastes better too. Oh, it's gotta taste good. You know what's good. so nice? It has been a little bit more expensive in the past, but a lot of the better priced value stores are carrying these now because they're catching on. This, mm -hmm. is, this is delicious, it's nutritious, and we can make it cost effective by putting it in a value market. We've diverged so far into a different direction on producing food that we're actually coming back to, to the original culture of how things were done. Yeah, churn, I mean, obviously, churn your own butter. Churn your own grass-fed butter. Now, hey, can I get a cow? <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So while my chicken is simmering and our pasta's cooking away, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up. Now, my husband has some awesome knife skills, and there's nothing sexier in the kitchen than a guy who knows how to use them. Chop it up a little bit. Yeah, so I've gradually learned from him, so I'm gonna have him chop some parsley for me. We're gonna spiralize some zucchini. That's gonna be a nice, healthier option. If you don't wanna do the pasta or the gluten-free pasta, zucchini does the trick. It soaks up that juice from the piccata really, really nicely. And then to finish it off, we'll just grate some Parmesan cheese. Ready? Yeah. All right. And the parsley, all it really is is just to add that touch, that garnish to the dish. Just a little green, little earth. Yeah, you don't want to add too much to control because parsley is a little bit stronger, and you don't want to take away what you're actually cooking in the food. So it's really just that garnish. And she likes the way I cut is because I can sit there and rock it back and forth. Just like this all day long. That's right, honey. <laughs> a little dancing in the kitchen. Yeah. Little cooking. Can't complain. <laughs> all right. That should be enough cheese. And then we'll go ahead and spiralize some zucchini. Super simple. Again, I'm going to spiralize my zucchini with my big, very fancy spiralizer. You can use any spiralizer that you choose. This one works really well for me. Just gonna take my zucchini, keeping it raw, and just spiral it down. It really gives that noodle consistency without the noodle. So I guess zoodle, as my sister says, zoodles. You don't wanna warm it up. Let the food warm it up for you. It's because once it gets to warm up, it gets soggy, starts to break apart. And it's not that noodle texture that you would have 
from like your pasta. So you want to keep it the way it is right now, as yeah. that's the keep way she's cutting it. Keep it whole. And definitely a better alternative than the pasta itself. So it's definitely a good, healthier uh, choice. My Dr. Brian. <laughs> Aging Dr. Brian. True story, ask him what he's been for the past Halloweens. He has one of the restaurants we worked for was a themed restaurant, and he actually got to wear scrubs. So he still currently owns those scrubs. And every year, kids bust out their Halloween costume. Here comes Brian in his good old doctor's outfit with his stethoscope. <laughs> All right, I don't know about you, but I am ready to eat. So you may notice we have our his and hers. Take a couple of these chicken tenders to plate on each of our dishes. You can pile it on as little or as thick as you want. The one thing you don't want to forget that I love the most is the sauce. Yes, so you can go ahead and spoon the sauce. So again, I love to make extra sauce. You can utilize the sauce over a bed of lettuce to make it a salad. Really want to coat that chicken to pull out the flavor. The zucchini is just going to soak that right up, as well as the pasta. Get some of those capers in there. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to forget are those capers. Yep. Definitely adds that flavor to it. Sorry, I love sauce. <laughs> going to drown it in there. So I'm gonna take a little sprig of our fresh chopped parsley that Brian so handsomely chopped for us. With my chopping skills. Yep. Take a little bit of that finely grated Parmesan cheese. I wish I could say it with a really cool Parmigiano Reggiano. And then those lemons that we saved from juicing earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and give a little zest on top just to finish it on out. Give it that fresh little zing at the end there. You don't want to add too much. You just want to add enough to give it just a little bit more flavor. We're ready to eat. Now this would make a perfect date night meal. Just add a little dry white wine or got the kiddos with you, some juice box or a little water. We can have some fun with it. But regardless, it's gonna be delicious. When you shine a light to something, it highlights the features in the house. Oh, that's nice, babe. Damn, I'm good. You are so good at it. <laughs> so come over here, and that'll be my next thing I'm gonna do for the kitchen. I wanna st start accentuating more of the areas, especially when you have books, you have cups. So if I add some cabinet lighting here, which will be my next project, it'll help demonstrate more of the aspects and the assets of the kitchen. LED lighting is perfect because just you get that bright light and it doesn't take any energy. So I'm gonna drill a hole right here, I drill a hole over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start feeding the wires from top down to the bottom of the cabinet. You wanna hide everything, it's gotta look good. So, all right, I'm gonna start drilling. All right, so now since we have our holes pre-drilled, the next thing to do is actually take electrical wire and start running it through the cabinets. Now let's start from this side. One neat little trick is, if you come over here, I'll show you. I can take this electrical wire, and I don't really want to see it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tucking it behind the shelf. What I want to do now is, I bought enough wire to make sure that I was able to transfer the current back, going back to the other side, uh, over the microwave. Tie everything in, bring it down here, and now I'm gonna tie everything to a switch, and then from the switch, I'll branch off, and then I'll tie it to the LED lights, going to both sides of the cabinet lighting. So from here, I'm gonna take the switch, and this is just the transformer, converting it from, uh, from 120 volt down to low voltage, because you have your load wire, and then you have your ground. And it's just as simple as tying the two wires together, wrapping with electrical tape, and then boom, you can carry the electricity down into your uh, cabinet lighting. And all I'm doing right here is just shortening the wire. I got a little too much that I actually stripped off, and I really don't need that much because I just don't want too much exposed. So one thing to know as you're doing this, there's no way to define which one's your load and which one's your ground. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna mark which one is our low wire. And I'm just marking it with a, a pen, as long as I know which one is my positive. Right now I just got done wrapping up the electrical tape. You don't want to expose wire, safety reasons, short out of fuse. 
And the next thing, now, since we're done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck this in. We're not gonna plug in the transformer yet. We'll do that later. Let's run all the wire first. All you have is a positive and a negative. It's really simple, it's not that hard to do. So, let's get going now. With this, I just bought a little cheap switch. It's about two bucks. What I wanna do is I'm gonna install this switch underneath and tuck it right here in the cabinet. So then I can just come in and it's seamless. You're not gonna see it. You come over here, you flip a switch, and I don't have to hire an electrician to come out and pre-wire, remove drywall, and, and increase the cost for something that really doesn't need to be done. That's pretty neat. And then you're gonna put that in the cabinet? Gonna drill that up? Yeah, so I do a lot of woodworking too. So. I'm gonna create a little holster. Once I get everything pre-wired, I'm gonna solder the wires on here. I'll be able to feed it through. Tie this in. I'll be able to bolt this or screw this underneath the cabinet. And the next thing you know, I got a switch that works. Turn it on and off. Simple Very easy. handy, babe. Proud of you. And you know what? The switch only costs two bucks. Cheaper the better. <laughs> A lot of the LED lighting, they actually have markers where you actually can see where you cut it with the scissors and you actually get it the size as you want. And this is really nice about the LED strips. Let's measure our length. I'm gonna hold it from that end. Okay, are you all the way to the end? Mm -hmm. So we got our wire ran down. The biggest thing is you wanna have more because you can always take away. But if you take away too much, you can never add more. So like that? Yes. Oh, you're going around. There you go. All right, I'm gonna go pick some strawberries out in my garden. Surprise the kids when they get home from school. That's a good one. All right, now that I've picked some strawberries for the boys, I'm gonna head out of here. I got some consulting to do. I soldered the wires, I electrical taped it. Now all we gotta do is take the back taping off I'll basically stick it onto the bottom of the cabinets, and voila, this work is done. An hour later, under cabinet lighting. From what I understand, we're gonna go for an industrial chic look with a modern twist, some clean lines, blues, grays, a little white, and maybe some glass to add some light in there. Let's see what we can find. Why don't you have a seat on this one? See what you like about it, the comfort. You know what, it is sturdy. I like that, it holds my posture. I really like the detailing along the sides, the classic design of the sofa. I think this will really work. It will look really nice. We need to incorporate a little bit more light into your space. With the glass element, we'll really do that. It'll illuminate it and add in a little more industrial touch with the metal. I think so. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. We really need a couple chairs. I really like the structure of this one. I think it's complementary to the styling of the sofa we picked out. It has a little bit more of a sleeker line that goes for that modern look that you're looking for. I just don't know. Is the color a little too dark? Well, you can always lighten it up a little bit. We can add a, a throw or a lumbar to really just add the texture and movement to the chair. Perfect, yeah, that looks much better. I think we found a winner. I had a great time with Lisa today. We picked out some great pieces. Lovely couch, a structured chair, a glass table to really bring that light in. I really can't wait to see how it turns out. It really adds a decorative piece to that. It really highlights It highlights the, the countertops. It really does. The decoration you have on the countertops. Yeah. It just, it adds It illuminates. That, yeah, illuminates, It illuminates, basically. it's bright. I and love that we can dim it. I love that we have the option. I love at night, when we all lights are off, we can just leave a little bit of LED. When you create something and you look at it and you did it, I don't know, it's just such an achievement. I don't know, we created something pretty cool first. Yeah, like what? Our baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, Our they're okay. <gasps> <laughs> I'm kidding.
I think you're pretty awesome. Thanks, babe. You're pretty great. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. You too. But I just don't tell you enough. <gasps> <laughs> you know, I get a lot of people that come over and they see me with the claw. Rah, rah. Give the wife a little pinch too. That's why I bought the grips on there. <laughs> this is so real right now because I'm getting annoyed with you. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Support for this program is from viewers like you. Thank you.